Good evening and welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, November 19th, 2018. I'd ask everyone in attendance to rise and join us in singing O Canada. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. With glowing hearts we see the rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land. Glorious and free, O oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. O oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. Thank you to the National Film Board for the images of our country and to an alumni from our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio. Uh, we will move into our agenda and I'll look for an adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. Uh, Councillor O'Toole. There, nothing like making a presentation. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Given. I uh, make a motion to adopt the minutes of the uh, City Council meeting held November 5th, 2018. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Are there any errors or omissions that we need to correct? Seeing nobody ringing in, then I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. You'll notice that we have six votes this evening. We have two council members that are off representing the City of Grand Prairie at the Rural Municipalities Association, and one council member that's off uh, this evening for personal reasons. Uh, and so, uh, so we'll go with the short bench this evening, uh, but we will move on to the adoption of the agenda. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Given. I would move that uh, we council approve the agenda as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on the agenda? Are there any errors or omissions, any changes that we need to make? Seeing nobody ringing in, then I will call for the vote. Please vote. And that motion carries as well. This brings us to the delegation portion of our agenda. This is an opportunity that we have at every regular city council meeting every two weeks uh, here at City Hall. Uh, we invite people to uh, come and present to city council. And uh, we absolutely appreciate it when people let us know ahead of time that they're planning to present, but it isn't required. Um, but we do have one delegation that let us know ahead of time that she wished to present, and that's Ms. Renee Charbonneau with respect to the Grand Prix Senate Ms. Charbonneau, if you'd like to make your way forward to the presenter's table, uh, welcome. Thank you, Mayor Given, Council. Um, I'm here more to do an update as to where we are with our project and to ask for a small amount of help for 2019. We had originally talked about, uh, in my first proposal, uh, the potential to move the cenotaph and do some upgrades to it. We do know that it does need some love. Um, but we'd like to put that on hold for a little while because Anavets and, and a few of the other players are still wanting to talk about that. So I'd like to um, let you know that right now we are fully funded for uh, the work that we plan on doing this year as long as our last two grants come through. I've already um, given you the information on the grants that we've applied for. And right now we are proud to say that we've accomplished our first major ceremony. We had Indigenous Veterans Day on November 8th and it was... Yeah, it was absolutely an amazing day. Um, very heartwarming to see our Indigenous community come together that way and how proud they were to be honoured and recognised the way so many across the country now are. So that was a, a huge step in the right direction. Um, I think that for the building of the gardens and the reconciliation portion that the gardens represents, that we have a huge opportunity as a community, as a city, as a region, to reach out to those Indigenous 
uh, veterans and their families and make sure that they know that they are appreciated. And I think that's going to go a long ways to doing a lot of healing. I know from speaking with Angie Career and uh, Loretta English Peranto that that first ceremony was uh, a step in the right direction towards healing. Having said that, um, we are going to be putting in approximately $350,000 worth of improvements into the land next year. We're almost through all of the building permit hurdles with uh, development services. So we've made some modifications to make them happy. We've done some negotiating, and we've come up with a beautiful uh, program delivery building that'll be a 24 by 60 building. Uh, powered by Atco Electric and uh, Blue Wave Propane are going to be our partners in, in those two things. We're still waiting to hear from Aquaterra on costs to bring in water and sewer. Um, and I'm also trying to negotiate with Anavets to purchase that piece of land as opposed to a lease because being a lessee, we've come across a lot of hurdles. For example, to bring in power under normal circumstances, if you own a piece of property, ATCO will do what they call an investment. And they'll say, okay, you pay $3,500 or $3,600 of that $9,600 bill, and we'll amortize the rest over 20 years. We can't do that. We're lessees, and Anavets is not in a position to be able to guarantee a loan that because that's basically what it is so to that end um, we'd like to talk to the city about the potential of getting some support for water and sewer sometime in 2020 this first year we don't need it we'll still be you know in very much in a construction zone but we would like to talk about what that could look like um, going forward. I've also been facing some huge challenges in getting a hold of the community association for Hillside and I'm hoping that council can put me in touch with the right people to make sure that we're engaging all of the partners in the community. I've had a wonderful conversation with Sandy Alexander from the school board thanks to Councillor O'Toole for that introduction. Um, they are very very excited about the gardens as a potential educational opportunity for field trips because we don't intend to charge the schools anything to come and attend and use the, the facility. So they're really excited. They're going to work with us on a number of different programs. Um, the one program that they're very excited about because they've seen uh, the Edmonton Loyal Edmonton Regiment's version, it's called Project Operation Soldier education and it's a tote with 53 different interactive items from World War One and World War Two, as well as Korea that kids are going to be able to engage with but ours is going to have a twist. Um, ours is going to be a white label version which is already Alberta teacher approved and Alberta, um, Alberta schools approved. Ours will be centered around being the life of a soldier from Northwest Alberta. So it's going to be tailored more to the soldiers of the North and hopefully will really help educate the kids in our region. Um, the building that we're, we're installing is going to be that educational hub. It's going to be where we have a lot of shadow boxes with information and artifacts from local soldiers, uh, such as uh, Captain Robert Pardell. While he wasn't killed during a war, he was still killed in a training accident with the snowboard, snowbirds, and he's, you know, from here. Charles Checker Tompkins from Gruard will be definitely being honored in that building as well. We've been in, in talks with their, his family. And so Canada's most famous Cree code talker came from our region, and we're going to be doing some really good stuff to recognize him and his service posthumously. Some of the other programs that we've got uh, developed are our coloring competition, which Mayor Gibbon, I think your kids took part in at the Royal Canadian Legion's uh, First Responders Day. And uh, that was created by a gentleman named Paul Jamiel from Ohio. He owns a company, he's a cartoonist, and uh, he has a series of children's books called Bikers or Animals. And he 
saw what happened with our monument and said, you know what, I can do something with that. So he got involved and we created this uh, coloring competition. We're also going to be working with the schools um, on an essay program. I talked with you about that about six months ago. Uh, the uh, school superintendent is going to work with me on developing the wording for uh, an essay program that is going to help us engage with the kids, be able to put the history of Canada through the eyes of a child in those gardens. So I'm really excited about that. The gardens are really coming along well. We've had a lot of uh, support with um, drafting company, RE Drafting, and uh, they've helped us develop what the, the gardens are going to look like uh, moving forward. And we have a planting uh, program that I've uh, provided you with. And that's where I'm going to start needing a little bit of help and support from the city is in the gardening aspect. We have one of the best um, parks departments in the country, and I would love to enlist some help from Josie and her team to make sure that we're getting the... We have some challenges in trying to do this based on the Indigenous um, medicine wheel, which is what we're doing. Um, trying to find some different shrubs and herbs that, that are, are indigenous to our region that are going to allow us to do what the First Nations Medicine Wheel initially intends for us to do. So although we can't necessarily put black spruce because of the viewing gallery we're putting in, there's got to be some different things that we can do, and I need some guidance and support in that regard. I'd also like some support to get some um, trees for the south side um, where our new fence is going to be going in. I don't know if the city has any inventory. And again, I would like to talk to the city about potentially sponsoring those trees along that back, that back fence. We're looking between 20 and 40 trees depending on you know, what's available, what's in stock, and uh, what the costs are. At the very least, helping us to apply for a green space grant through Trees Canada. So, but they require the support of your community for that kind of stuff. Um, we're going to be hosting a number of events uh, June 1st, which is uh, Armed Forces Day. We're going to be sponsoring, uh, supporting a, an event called It's All About Our Kids Day. And we really want the city involved with that and engaged with this particular event. It's an anti-bullying day. It's all about teaching our children the different things and helping educate parents on the different tools and resources that are there to help their children gain mental strength and the emotional fortitude and sometimes the physical skills they need. So to that end, we're working with Champion Gyms, uh, the Royal Canadian um, Army Cadets, the Air Cadets. We're working with a, a group called Bullying Ends, uh, they're an Alberta nonprofit motorcycle organization that works with the Blue Knights and the Red Knights, so the, the police and fire. And they help talk to kids, take them for rides. When a child is being bullied at school, they can, the parents can reach out to this group and they will actually go and either escort or pick up a child that's being bullied from school. And they put all the focus on the child that's being bullied and none on the bullies, and so what they do is they support this child, they give them a backpack, they talk to them, they buddy them up with an adult, so that this child knows, it doesn't matter what else happens in the world, they got one person that they can go talk to. And it's working, and it's saving lives all across Western Canada, and uh, it's an event that we really would like to see here, because again, all of the different military services teach discipline. They help teach you certain f mental fortitude. And it gives the, the parents uh, a way to look at, in because we want to do it in a trade show type setting outdoors. Um, it's going to give kids and parents both the opportunity to watch martial arts demo demonstrations, find out how the dojis and the senseis teach kids, how they, they help encourage them. So give the parents and the kids both a fun day, but a day that also gives them some education. Uh, the next thing on my agenda is the memory panels. We are going to be installing our first 75 this summer. We have got all of the stories and the photos complete. 
um, provided our heritage grant comes through in December. Uh, construction on all of the, the actual stands starts in January. So we're looking very forward to getting all that hard research work from the last two years actually into the ground so people can come and see them. And I've given you the anatomy of the memory panels. Now with the garden, what we're doing is we're breaking it up into nine sections. There are eight actual miniature gardens with walkways through them. And then there's the outer walkway. The outer walkway is the historical walkway of Canada at War and Peace. And will allow for lots of generations to come to add panels and information to the gardens. Um, in total, we've identified 320 regional killed in action soldiers. Approximately 60 of those are First Nations, Indigenous soldiers. When you think that Canada had, between World War I and II, approximately 12,000 Indigenous soldiers, that's Métis, Inuit, and First Nations, you think about that and you realize that our very, very sparsely populated region had 60 deaths of Indigenous soldiers. That is a huge disproportionate number of soldiers that loved this country enough to give up their status, to fight for this country, and it's going to be really important to honor them. So I've been working with the Friendship Center, the Mischief Cultural um, Association, and a number of other organizations, and I've been given commitment that if we can collect their stories, that we will actually be able to not just have them translated into English and French, but if they spoke Cree, if they spoke Dene or Beaver or Mischief, that we will be able to translate that and have that on those information panels as well. We have sponsorship opportunities that we would like to get out to other organizations um, on the different levels. We have a list of all of our project supporters to date, um, people at different companies that have helped us immensely. The Loyal Edmonton Regiment in particular has been amazing to work with them and their museum. Um, we've identified 17 Loyal Edmonton Regiment members from this region that were killed in action. So tying them back to Grand Prairie, to our army base, it's all been very, very fascinating <laughs> information to learn. So with our fundraising, we're doing really, really well. Phase one is, is completed and is completely paid for, fully insured. Um, phase two is the installation of the program delivery building. And phase three, which if all the grants come through will happen simultaneously, will be the installation of our concrete sidewalks, our chain link fencing, and our first 75 memorial panels. Because we're able to do so much of this work behind the scenes that basically we break ground in May and should have gardens that people will be able to actually start walking through by the end of July. So we're, we're, we're progressing quite nicely. We're looking at about $300,000 worth of, of improvements going into that property this coming year. Um, and I just, I let you know which grants I've applied for. If there's anything that the, the city can do with regards to letters to those granting organizations to support us, we definitely would appreciate that. The biggest thing I would like some help with this year, if the city can put me in touch with um, community living or whichever other board is most appropriate, would be, like I said, for planting some trees, some anything from, from city inventory that might be available or help to get the Trees Canada grant, anything that we can get in that regards, some help with the actual uh, planting program and you know deciding how things go. I'm not a professional, but I do have a lot of ladies, thanks again to Councillor O'Toole. He introduced me to a bunch of the gardening programs. He's obviously got a green thumb. Uh, he put me in touch with all these people, and they're willing to help, so I'm getting the volunteer help, but I need some professional guidance and help to make sure that those gardens are spectacular, and then help to get in touch with the hillside community folks, 
and get them more engaged with the process. It's been like pulling hen's teeth. I've tried eight or nine times now to reach out in the last six months and gotten nowhere, not even a response by email, nothing. So any help I can get to get them more involved and more on board, I would appreciate. And then any help with snow removal for this year at the monument site. I just finished having abdominal surgery and I'm not allowed to push a snow shovel again for a while. So <laughs> that would be where we're at right now with things. Um, uh, I'm pretty, pretty proud of where we've gotten to so far. And with the uh, wrap that's going to go on our building, we finally made it so that the building inspection side of things is happy. So... Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for the update and for all of your work out in the community. I know that uh, your presentation was circulated to all of council, and so even our colleagues that aren't here this evening uh, received that in their email inbox. And uh, there is an opportunity for questions, uh, obviously a pretty extensive rundown on how things are going, which we appreciate. Councillor Friesen. Thanks, Mayor Given. I just wanted to thank you, uh, Renee. I really enjoyed the, uh, the Indigenous um, Remembrance Day, and learned a great deal that I, I had no idea um, what our Indigenous brothers and, and sisters gave to to defend a country um, that, in in many ways, um, didn't serve them well, and and uh, I'm deeply grateful for that, and to you for putting that together. So I'm, I'm delighted that you're doing this, and I'm encouraging folks who are listening or um, watching from home, uh, it's really gonna be a place worthwhile spending, spending an afternoon uh, when it's all done. I, I, I'm lo really looking forward to it, and thank you for your very hard work in it. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Friesen. I don't see anybody else in the queue, uh, so thanks very much for, for your update, uh, Ms. Charbonneau, and, uh, and again, for all your hard work on the monument. Thanks Thank so much. Thank you very much, and like I said, if you guys can help guide me with this planting process, I want to make sure that I do this town proud and that, that um, those gardens really, truly do be that, become that place of peace and reflection, education, and remembrance, because those are the key things that make for a very strong community. Absolutely. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks so much. Oh, was there anybody else this evening that wanted to present to City Council? Was there anybody else that came this evening intending to present to Council? I'm looking out across the crowd and I'm seeing people sort of shaking their heads saying that they are they weren't here. They're just here as observers, I guess, uh, here to watch the action. And so that's fine. But uh, as I said, this opportunity does exist every regular City Council meeting. Um, I guess we will close the delegation portion of our agenda. We'll move on to public hearings. We do have one this evening, and I will call to order the public hearing for bylaw C-1389, uh, road closure bylaw. I'll look to administration for an introduction. And uh, is this going to be Mr. Glavin? Thank you, Mayor Given. So we'd request the council move the recommendation as presented. The uh, recommendation for the road closure uh, was an application by the Economic Development and Land Department within the city to close the road. Uh, this is to facilitate a land transfer in the area. The lane that is uh, to be closed would be transferred for a road widening project uh, adjacent to Highway or to uh, 132nd Avenue. Uh, all of the requirements under the MGA have been met and. Um, uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Sure. Thanks very much, Mr. Glavin. Any questions for administration? Councillor Bressy. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'm just curious, after we close this lane, what happens to it? Mr. Glavin. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, essentially, you won't see any physical changes. The lane is what we would call a landscaped lane right now. It's just grass, uh, and it will be consolidated with the adjacent lots. So, and then do they pay us for that, or...? Uh, thank you, Mayor Gavin. The compensation is in kind, so we are swapping our land for their land. Thanks very much. Thanks for the questions, Councillor Bressy. Any other questions for administration at this time? Uh, we will have another opportunity after we uh, close the presentation submission portion, so uh, we will open that now. I'd open the presentation submission portion of this public hearing and ask if there was anyone in attendance that wished to speak to the subject matter of this uh, public hearing. Uh, going once going twice. I don't see anybody coming forward, uh, but uh, this would be the last opportunity to speak if anybody wished to speak to the, this public hearing and road closure bylaw. Not seeing anybody coming forward. I'll ask council, do you have any last questions for administration before we move on? 
Seeing nobody ringing in, then I would close the public hearing and we'd move on to business arising. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that uh, Council give first reading to bylaw C-1389 being a road closure bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, motion for first reading was not open for discussion and debate. I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that Council give second reading to bylaw C-1389. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on second reading? It's all saving it for third reading, hey? Okay. Uh, then I'll call for the vote on second reading. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Given. This is where the debate could enter into the room. I would move that Council have third reading for bylaw C-1389. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. So this is a motion to have third and final reading here at this e uh, at this meeting this evening. In order for this motion to pass, it must pass uh, unanimously with the council members in attendance. If it does not pass unanimously, then it would come back at a subsequent council meeting. Uh, is there any discussion or debate as to the merits of having third and final reading tonight? Seeing nobody ringing in, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion does carry unanimously, and so we can have third and final reading. Councillor Thiessen. That's good news, but slightly anticlimactic, but I would move that Council give third reading to bylaw C-1389. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate in our last opportunity? Councillor O'Toole. Yeah, I thought I'd better chime in here. Uh, that road was at, used at one time prior to the construction of 132nd, and the number of businesses have been now uh, alienated from using the back alley for uh, accessing freight and I was just wondering what the plan is in the future because they don't have front access they have just rear access and, uh, I know that was a discussion that I had earlier uh, with com administration earlier okay. this year uh, so mr. Glavin do you have any comment on access to adjacent properties Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, this particular lane uh, has only been used by the adjacent property owner as part of his entire property. It's contiguous use, so there has been no public access. The lane in question, I believe, is one lane over to the east. It's the one that's been impacted uh, due to 132nd Avenue construction. So that would be the 101st Street, by the look of it. And, and so the main change there is that there's no longer any left turn access. Is that, is that correct? Thank you, Mayor Given. That's correct. Um, and is and but that parcel, sorry, the 101st Street is actually not impacted by this lane closure, road closure. Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, any any other questions, Councillor O'Toole, in terms of? Uh, no, I think that was uh, clear enough. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Um, seeing nobody else in the queue, then I will call for the vote on third and final reading. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion carries unanimously, and I think that handles all of our business under public hearings this evening, um, and would take us into, uh, I believe, our committee business. Um, since we have no unfinished business or reports, and we'll start off with 9.1, Councillor Thies and the Community Living Committee. That is correct, Mayor Given. That was my committee meeting, and I would move that Council approve the minutes of the meeting, the Community Living Committee meeting held November 6, 2018. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries, Councillor Thiessen. So we got a couple items of business coming out of that meeting on November 6th. Uh, the first being uh, the Bill Adam Park naming nomination. And I would move that uh, Council approve the naming of Neighborhood Park located at 112th Avenue and 93rd Street to be named Bill Adam Park. Uh, in case you're wondering who Bill Adam was and how he's getting a park named after him, he was nominated by the Downtown Association uh, and they cited his long-term volunteer service uh, within the community as the reasons for it. Uh, from what I understand, he was actively involved in, in uh, minor hockey. He also uh, participated with many local organizations such as City Council, City Planning Commission, the Police Commission, Hospital Board, Co-op Board, Kinsman Club, Knights of Columbus, the K-40, and the, as I stated first, and off the top, the Grand Prairie Minor Hockey League. Uh, 
Yeah. So I would uh, I would urge council to approve this park as committee's recommendation. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on the recommendation on the motion? Again, seeing nobody ringing in, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen, I think you still had some another piece of business. Yeah, second order of business from uh, that committee meeting on November 6th. Uh, we had a presentation from Mr. Jared Gossin representing the St. Lawrence Centre, uh, and uh, through the conversation that committee had with Mr. Gossin, uh, comes a recommendation that uh, would move that uh, council direct the mayor to write a letter in support of provincial funding for day shelter services in our community. Uh, you may be aware of Jared Gossin and the hard work that he has done in our community. He was here at our last council meeting and then followed that up with, uh, with a meeting at committee. Uh, it was sort of a second chance for him to really uh, state how dire the situation is and with staffing and space uh, at the St. Lawrence Centre and that uh, we need some funding to help our, our hard to house people and our street engaged population in the city of Grand Prairie and this would be one step taking us in that direction. Thanks very much Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Again, seeing nobody ringing in, then I will call for the vote. Please vote. Motion carries. Councillor Thiessen, was there anything else from that set of minutes that you wanted to highlight? I did highlight a few things in my package, uh, largely coming from Director Miller's uh, Director's uh, Verbal Update Service Area. Uh, and uh, so I guess I'll just start off at the top. All the good news stories. Uh, construction is finished for the year on the Bear Creek Outdoor Pool. The finishing touches will happen next year and sealing will occur prior to opening in 2019. The winterization of that has already taken place and the mayor and a few councillors were able to ride the water slide to ensure that it was safe. So that is done until 2019. I hope families will have a good time at the Bear Creek Pool. Also, Revolution Place uh, surpassed their targeted uh, 2018 number of tickets sold. Uh, they had uh, estimated that they could sell 30,100 tickets. Uh, as of that committee meeting, they have sold 32,419 to date. So well on track, hopefully, for 35, maybe 40. I don't know how many events they got left. But uh, uh, finally, the Bike Skills Park. Uh, I really want to talk about this because uh, uh, for myself, I had some concerns that it was a bit underfunded, especially when I saw the presentation. But it's a great example of how many hands in the community coming together for one cause can, can make a uh, light of work and uh, make it easier on our pocketbooks as well. Uh, so the construction began on September 10th and despite the fact that Grand Prairie received over 40 millimeters of rain and 20 centimeters of snow, it was completed uh, prior to this uh, committee meeting near the end of October. Uh, over 500 cubic yards of the City of Grand Prairie's recycled crushed concrete product was used for the base surfacing, which is a great example of how uh, our recycling programs work in the city as done by the City of Grand Prairie. And approximately 1,400 cubic yards of clay and hauling was donated to build and shape the bumps and jumps area by Hamel Excavating. 400 equipment hours were donated by Brandt's Tractor for all of the heavy excavation equipment used for the project. Over 500 lineal feet of logs were donated for the wooden skills area by Canfor, and approximately 300 hours of volunteer labor were provided by Wapiti Trail Society. Uh, this uh, skills park will be suitable for ages 4 to 75 plus. I can't wait to see somebody 75 plus, like yeah. kicking some tricks on the, on the bike park. And uh, has features for beginner to expert riders. I'd just like to take a moment to thank all of the volunteers and uh, the people who helped contribute both material equipment and other goods to ensure that this project happened for uh, all ages of people and riders in our community and that is all thanks thanks very much Councillor Thiessen uh, we'll move on to the corporate services committee meeting and I think that was you wasn't it Councillor Tool? yes it was thank you very much Mayor Given uh, I'd like to make a motion that uh, uh, we approve the minutes of the corporate services committee meeting held Tuesday, November 6, 2018. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Is there anything we need to correct before we formally adopt them? I don't see anybody ringing in, so I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor O'Toole, anything to highlight? Well, we got started off with the reports of the Community Service Director, uh, Ms. Uh, Susan Walker. She did a verbal presentation on, on access. Uh, assessment and taxation, uh, corporate facility management, 
uh, finance, human relation, uh, sorry, human resources, uh, IT uh, services, and the procurement process. After that, we had the unaudited financial statements as of September 30th, and uh, yeah, that was about it. We took a couple items off the outstanding items list, so we're getting closer to that zero mark, but uh, that's not always a good thing either. We've got lots of things to do in this community, so thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, so we'll move on to item 9.3, the Infrastructure and Protective Services Committee meeting. Uh, that was chaired by Councillor Clayton, but uh, she is, as we noted before, away. And so I think we're going to ask Councillor Blackburn to step in and take over that set of minutes. Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mayor Gavin. I would like to move that Council approve the minutes of the Infrastructure and Protective Services Committee meeting held Tuesday, uh, November 13th, 2018. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing nobody ringing in, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, Councilor Blackburn, anything you'd like to highlight from that set of minutes? Uh, a couple of things briefly. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, the first would be to uh, just mention that uh, according to the report we received from the Deputy Director for uh, Protective Services, uh, the Economic Development Committee is now taking applications for members. And uh, that is amongst, I believe, a number of committees that are looking for public members at this time of year. Um, we had a, a brief verbal report, uh, as was promised, on uh, progress at the Parkside Inn. And um, the only thing I'll highlight from that is the fact that a safety audit has been uh, conducted and that the results are being compiled or at least they were at the time of, uh, of our meeting on last Tuesday. Um, the third thing I'll mention is the um, uh, Safe City Roads Action Plan. That was reported on to us uh, during the week. And um, just to briefly highlight, um, the driver for starting up that action plan was the fact that between 2010 and 2014, there was a 155% increase in injury collisions within the city. And it was agreed that uh, something needed to be done to take action against that number carrying on. Um, and so the action plan included the, uh, uh, the four pillars of enforcement, education, engineering, and analytics. Um, the one that I'll highlight is the um, uh, enforcement. And as everybody knows, I'm sure that involved the uh, automated traffic enforcement process that we've uh, um, adopted over the last few years. Um, the results are good. Uh, between 2014 and 2017, um, there was a decrease of 45% in the number of uh, injury collisions. And uh, so the numbers in 2017 were approximately equal to the numbers in 2011. So we're seeing uh, uh, a reduction back to the kinds of numbers that, uh, that we had bef almost before this uh, action plan started. Uh, it was good news all around. The numbers are very interesting, but I won't go into any more details tonight. Uh, thank you for that. Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn, and thanks for that update from that committee. Uh, I think that handles all of our committee business. We had no items of correspondence this evening, uh, but with respect to delegation business, obviously we had the presentation from Ms. Charbonneau, um, and at minimum we should be receiving that to acknowledge it. Councillor O'Toole. Yeah, Mayor Given, I will make a motion to uh, accept the uh, report uh, for information from Ms. Charbonneau. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Motion carries. Um, we had no notices of motion this evening, and so I think that brings us to council member reports. Uh, and I guess starting at the start, at the top of our list, uh, Council O'Toole, I believe you had a update from the Alberta Bilingual Municipalities Association. And you just have your microphone's gone off. Right. This is the first meeting we've had since we had the uh, Francophone Francophilly Convention here in Grand Prairie back in uh, in September, and uh, it was just a, a phone-in conference call. And uh, one of the things that come up was uh, the Alberta Bilingual Municipalities Association is 
trying to fund uh, communities to make their website bilingual. So uh, I was joined with Rebecca Lee from Economic Development, and uh, we still have a bunch of research to do to find out what actually that means. And uh, so that was the gist of the whole conversation that we talked about. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Thank you. Um, Grand Prairie Public Library Board, Councillor Blackburn, I think you said you had an update. Yes, thank you. Uh, we did meet uh, last week, and um, uh, I don't have a lot of details to um, to talk about tonight, except to say that the uh, Human Resources Committee was able to report that they've closed the activity on uh, the hiring of a new library director, and uh, we're very pleased uh, to announce uh, to folks uh, through the media this past week that we've hired um, uh, Deb Kreiderman, who comes to us from Camrose, where she was the uh, director of the library there. And her due date to start was today. And uh, having heard nothing different, I would presume that she was in her role today. We're very happy to have her along and we're looking forward to her carrying on uh, with or uh, improving upon some of the excellent work that we've uh, carried on in the last few years with our previous director, uh, Maureen Curry. Thanks very much. Mr. Blackburn, and uh, we'll have to welcome her to Grand Prairie. Uh, um, and thanks for the update and note that she should be in town now. Um, Councillor Friesen, I believe you had Grand Prairie Sports Council. I did, and then uh, another one as well that I'll, I'll uh, refer to. So uh, Sport Council met. It was actually uh, a meeting as well as their annual strategic uh, meeting. So lots went on that day. Um, they've been out in active eating, meeting teachers in Byzantin and Sexsmith, and... Um, they are assisting with some grants for Active Alberta, Choose Well, Get Active Network for Newcomer Try It Day. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Try It Days that the Sport Council supports, it's days when um, folks can go out and just try out any sport that, uh, that they've been wanting to. So, for instance, if you wanted to try out um, ladies' roller derby, well, not maybe most of you, but if someone wanted to try a ladies roller derby, uh, there would be a try it day and you just go along with several other newcomers. And um, that's the kind of thing that the sport council supports. So they're also doing that with um, newcomers, which of course includes a lot of uh, immigrant newcomers, which is really exciting for them to be able to try some sports that are near and dear to us here in Grand Prairie. Um, and uh, also, oh, just a, an interesting note, the Wapiti Nordic Trails are allowing fat biking on snowshoe trails this winter. So if you're into some fat biking, uh, that's opening today, November 18th. So and that's just on the, on the snowshoeing trails. Um, and, uh, oh, and the Arctic Winter Games bid, of course, is uh, due at the end of November. And uh, that's uh, moving along quite well as... as uh, far as I'm aware. So there was that. And then, uh, oh, the uh, Youth Council. So Youth Council had their, their kickoff, and there were a few other councillors there. I think Councillor O'Toole was there, and Councillor Bressie was there for a while with me, and Councillor Thiessen was there as well. And uh, it was an open mic night, so it was an opportunity for some of Grand Prairie's youth to get on the stage at Tito's and uh, and there were some excellent artists. I had I couldn't stay till till the end of all of them, but uh, the few that I saw, there was a, a fellow who got up, and you may recognize uh, his name escapes me now from the um, from Rednecks to Rainbows, Spencer. Thank you. And uh, he did a, a comedy bit that was great. Uh, a couple of singer songwriters, uh, or sorry, a singer songwriter, another um, singer that did a, a wonderful cover of. Um, me and Bobby McGee, which is a great karaoke song. So, uh, so that was a really great night. I saw some new faces and uh, and some old faces. And I'm delighted this year that they have name tags saying that they are Grand Prairie Youth Council because that really um, shows uh, how important these kids are to the city and allows others to identify that they are city is kids who are going to be movers and shakers in our in our city. So that's it for me. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Friesen. Uh, we'll move on to Councilmember Roundtable, and we'll start with Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, there was a number of things that uh, I was able to accomplish this since uh, the 5th of November. Uh, one of them was the APEGA President's Visit, 
And that's a, an event that I like to go to every year because it's a very innovative uh, evening. And uh, this last uh, month's presentation was, uh, the president spoke on traffic and vehicles and how they're gonna be eliminated or used in a different manner in the next few years. Uh, one of his uh, one of his thoughts were, and actually one of the things that he does all the time, he travels all over the entire world, and he'll call up a car in his phone, and uh, he pays by the hour or by the four hours or by the 24-hour period, and uh, it's cheaper than renting a car. And uh, when he's done with it, he just leaves it, and a little button tells the head office where it is, and when he needs another car, another car shows up uh, at a different location, and uh, he he pay, it's cheaper in the long run to either lease a vehicle or even to rent it, and uh, this is worldwide at this point right now. Uh, it's not in Alberta that I'm aware of, but uh, uh, it's pretty amazing. Uh, actually, I should say that another program is in Calgary where they have similar situations. It's not quite the same, but uh, you can walk down the street, see a car. It's all labeled and marked, and you can punch in on your app. It gives you the code, and uh, the key's in the glove box. You drive it wherever you want. When you're done with it, you park it and uh, hit the button again, and uh, somebody else can use it. So it's pretty amazing. So that may eliminate a lot of parking lots for people and uh, the concerns for trying to park and the high cost of parking. Uh, yes, I did attend the Youth uh, Council talent show. And yes, I was going to speak on the lady that sang Bobby McGee by Janis Joplin. And uh, she did it just like the songbird lady that Janis Joplin was. And uh, I did attend the uh, Indigenous Veterans Day. I was op had an opportunity to speak that day. And a couple of things that I had never realized before when I was doing my research for the speech, the most decorated soldier in the First World War for Canada was an Indigenous person from Ontario. And in the Second World War, the most decorated soldier was from Manitoba. And... Uh, just something that you just don't hear on regularly, but uh, it's quite interesting. I did attend the Diwali on uh, the 10th of November and November and uh, day ceremonies at Anavets. I brought my granddaughter with me and uh, Mayor Given and I gave her the uh, ability to lay a wreath on uh, Cenotaph and uh, she was pretty choked up about that. Other than that, uh, I did attend the Northern Spirit Light Show uh, at the Evergreen Park, and what a wonderful event that is again this year. So thank you very much, Mayor Given. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Councillor Bressy. Thank you, Mayor Given. I think I'll highlight the weekend before last. I kind of unintentionally had a weekend full of local arts, and it was fun. Uh, I finished the weekend by going for a tour of the new theater at the Catholic High School, the community theater that's out there, and it's quite the room if you haven't been in there. Holy smokes, it's impressive. I think my personal highlight was walking on the Clancy floor, floor above, so instead of having catwalks, they have you basically walk on a wire mesh fence about 40 feet above the floor, and that's where they rig all the lights, and you should ask for a private tour so you can go do that. It was it was fun, but it's there's going to be so many great events going on in that room so it was fun to see it then i went to the art battle so this was at the montrose cultural center it was put on by fubar beverage services and it was in support of the united way and what they did was they got six local artists on stage to they got 20 minutes to paint and then the crowd voted on who made the best painting in 20 minutes then they got six more artists up and we voted again and then they got some finalists up and it was this really cool, fun, energetic event. There were a few hundred people standing up, milling around, walking around, seeing the others go. And it was impressive what people can do in 20 minutes. And I picked up a sweet painting from my office at home, so that was great too. And then I think my highlight of that weekend, though, was on the Saturday afternoon, I went to an event put on by Prima and Real Shorts. And they showed six short films that have been made locally here in Grand Prairie. And Councillor Blackburn had a part in one. And going into budgets gave me comfort that he knows how to look for alternative sources of revenue. I know that was a campaign promise, so I loved to see him on screen making that come alive. 
And I think what was impressive, uh, really impressive about this event was two things. First of all, I was really surprised by how, by the production values of a few of these local films in terms of the sets, the special effects. They were actually professional movies. And maybe I shouldn't have been surprised, but I was really surprised by especially the set, the attention that went into the sets and the resources that went into these. So that was fun to see. And then I think another highlight for me was after I was sitting around a table, chatting with a few people, and we were counting how many production companies are here in Grand Prairie. And we counted seven video production companies that are local here in Grand Prairie owned, and then a few more in the region. And that's an industry that's taken off here. I think it's been a good news story of our local economic development. It's great that local industries, instead of spending their money elsewhere, they're spending money here in Grand Prairie to tell their stories. But also it's great that we're creating these storytellers here in Grand Prairie, both to create art, but also tell the story of our community. I understand Councillor O'Toole was at a, was at a set today and he's, and he's involved in that scene. Councillor Blackburn has been, as I said, and it's fun to see this, industry taken off here, not just as art form, but this industry. Well, thanks very much, Councillor Pressey. Councillor Thiessen. Ooh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Given. Uh, most of the events that uh, that I attended uh, were, uh, were already talked about, but uh, I, I would like to go back to the Remembrance Day long weekend. Uh, it was uh, quite a sequence of days in a row. Uh, of course, the Indigenous Veterans uh, Remembrance Day. Uh, I got to see Councillor O'Toole give greetings on behalf of Council. He did a great job up there. Uh, and uh, it was, seemed like you were fighting back tears there for a bit at one point. Uh, not sure, but there was a, there was a, it was a very emotional ceremony, especially from the, from the Indigenous speaker uh, from uh, Sturgeon Lake. Uh, she spoke from the heart and uh, it was uh, very moving, very touching. We got to give a nice big thank you to Ms. Renee Charbonneau, who we saw earlier tonight. Uh, after we had the uh, dedication and the laying of the wreaths. On uh, the Friday, I also got to attend uh, the Remembrance Day ceremony with uh, Councillor O'Toole and Minhas uh, at the Composite High School. So it was uh, two for two. Councillor O'Toole got to drop the wreath again, and uh, I was 0 for two at that point. So uh, I was happy to do that. And then uh, the, the party with Councillor O'Toole continued as uh, on the Saturday, uh, it was Councillor O'Toole and I who gave greetings on behalf of the city uh, at the Diwali event. Uh, uh, hosted by the Grand Prairie Hindu uh, Society. Uh, we got to light the mud lamps, I believe they're called Diyas, um, which is cool. It's always an honor to be a part of it. Uh, I had missed it the last two years, and the, the cultural like festivities were uh, above and beyond anything I'd ever seen out of the Five Mile Hall here uh, this, this last year. It, the, this event is growing. It actually has grown out of the Hindu temple and into the Five Mile Hall, and uh, Dr. Roy was asking, if we may be able to fit it into Revolution Place in the near future. So that could be coming to a committee meeting near you, or at least an Arts Council committee meeting. Uh, but it was uh, wonderful to be there, and kudos to all the kids who put on the big play. I think it was uh, Ram um, coming back and returning, the return of, of light from darkness after a 14-year journey. It was uh, quite intense. It was all lip-synced, but the kids were incredible, and the costumes and the set design was, was awesome as well. We laughed uh, a lot and uh, I was uh, honored to be there. Uh, then on Remembrance Day, uh, I got to take part with uh, Councillor Jackie Clayton in dropping the wreath on behalf of the City of Grand Prairie at Revolution Place, which is always a great time. Uh, I managed to make it into the program twice, um, and I only know that because one, my name was in the program, and two, it said, please hold the applause uh, when people are dropping the wreaths, and I had uh, three different members, one from the GP Boys Choir, uh, my friend George Malcolm, who always uh, does the service, uh, and uh, and uh, Chris Workington. Uh, they happened to notice that I started the applause in years past, and so that never seemed to be an issue. I was always applauding for the veterans who had served so so hard for our country and for our freedoms, uh, but uh, the applause, once you start them, they just don't stop. So when the local businesses came up, uh, the applause kept going. It just didn't seem to have that ring. So I was like, oh, look at that. I'm making a difference even though I screwed up big time uh, in, in previous years. Uh, finally, talking about screw-ups, uh, I also got to have a private tour of the Performing Arts Center at the John Paul II School. Uh, I arrived bright and early at 9 a.m., uh, and I sent a few texts to uh, Wayne Ayling, who had sent out the invitations, uh, and he wasn't responding. Uh, but I did happen to notice that the side door was propped open with a ladder, so I thought, oh, well, this is how we get in. 
So I went in and I got a private tour all by myself and no one was around. So I toured the school and then I walked back in the theater. I walked on the wire mesh up top that Councillor Bressy was talking about earlier. Uh, and then I ran into one of the construction workers and then I realized I was in an active construction site and they were doing all the wiring there. But uh, one of them was kind enough to show me how everything worked. Uh, turned on the lights and pushed the bleachers back with the automatic button and told me that up to four people can stand on each of those lighting panels of that wire mesh. But I tell you, you sure feel the butterflies in your stomach as you're looking down about know, 60 feet, 50 feet down to the black floor below. But uh, it was great. I didn't attend in the evening because I thought I got more than a good enough show in the morning. Uh, so I had an early night that night after a very busy weekend. And that's my report. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Councillor Blackburn? Well, I, uh, I have a, an empty dance card. I have nothing to report this time around. So this will be the shortest report I've made since I started in this position. <laughs> Thanks very much, Councillor Blackburn. Councillor Friesen. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Thiessen, when you were talking about walking around the construction site and not realizing you were on a construction site, I had a, a flashback in my mind. Do you remember the Mr. Magoo cartoon when he was walking the... Right? <laughs> So I, I, I hope you didn't come as close to tragedy several times like uh, Mr. Magoo did. Of all the things that have been mentioned, I, I attended uh, many, of them, many of them, of course. Remembrance Day started bright and early with uh, breakfast at Trinity Lutheran and then off to the Cenotaph where I lay a wreath, um, not on behalf of the city this year, but on behalf of my private business um, and events, lunch, and to the Legion. That's always a really exciting and busy day. And I must have turned 80 that weekend because I decided I'd had enough coffee and I tried hot water and now I'm drinking hot water. So, yeah. Um, and the, on the only thing that's not been mentioned yet that, yet that I really uh, enjoy and have many times in the past uh, was the sixth annual round dance. In, uh, and this year it was at um, Charles Spencer School. It's typically been at, at GPRC, but wasn't this year. And that it's, it's, it's just so... F such a great evening of um, food and 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 community and dancing, and my knee is starting to recover. That round dancing always is painful on my left knee, but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't not do it just for a for a day of limping after. So I was delighted to give greetings on behalf of the city. And this year it happened to fall on Louis Riel Day, and uh, I, I listened carefully at the flag raising on uh, Louis Riel Day and uh, the Métis flag here at, at City Hall and was able to make reference to a number of the things that I, I learned there. And um, it, it just always is very special to me when I'm able to attend uh, ceremonies and, and different things with our Indigenous community. Uh, it just means a lot to me personally. So had a great couple of weeks and looking forward to a great couple more. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Uh, well, obviously, Council's covered a lot of a lot of ground. Um, I just uh, before anything else, I just want to say thanks very much uh, to our administration team who put on a very successful uh, budget deliberation last week. Uh, council members spent uh, three fairly intense days uh, in these very seats. It feels like we were just here a couple of days ago uh, when we sat down this evening. Uh, but I do want to say thanks to our administration team who uh, worked some long hours, uh, not just over the course of those three days, but obviously leading up to the budget and uh, on behalf of the community and on behalf of council. Thanks so much to the entire team for all of your work. Certainly appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, uh, and other than that, I guess the only other one that I didn't hear um, an update on was uh, the Festival of Trees. So I had an opportunity to attend the 30th Annual Festival of Trees for the Grand Prairie Regional Hospital Foundation. Um, and wanted to make a special note, the event is always great. Uh, for 30 years, it has been sort of the unofficial start to the Christmas season, um, but really for a good cause to raise money for enhancements to our local hospital. Um, as uh, you probably know, the foundation is uh, working towards making some enhancements above and beyond what uh, the provincial government will pay for to go into uh, the new building. Um, and they continue to equip our, our local facility, um, the QE2, on a regular basis with specialized equipment that helps attract and retain doctors as well as provide better service for Grand Prairie residents. Um, but there were a couple of items uh, of note from the event. Uh, first, there is a uh, there was a great donation from Canadian Natural, uh, who some of us might think of them as CNRL. I think they've dropped the RL part, uh, but anyways, they're just Canadian Natural now. 
um, and they donated seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the hospital foundation. Um, there was a great partnership announced between the Grand Prairie Regional Hospital Foundation and the children, uh, the Stollery Children's Hospital in Edmonton. Um, for many years, there have been a number of different fundraisers in our local region uh, to support the Stollery, and uh, there's now a new partnership between the two uh, that will allow some of those funds uh, that support the Stollery to come back to the Grand Prairie region uh, to support enhanced children's services here uh, at our local hospitals. Um, there was a very powerful uh, video uh, that was launched that evening um, uh, um, focused around um, Addie uh, Radburn. And so many uh, council members will know the Radburn family, obviously, and Addie uh, having to have a heart transplant, a very, very powerful video that demonstrated how the Stollery, uh, the QE2, the local staff, and that sort of entire system works exactly the way that it should when it's needed. Um, so it was great to see that partnership launched with a $1.5 million uh, contribution from the Stollery back to our local hospital foundation to enhance uh, care for children in, in the QE2. And then finally, the uh, family of Doug Marshall was on stage to make a presentation on behalf of Doug. Um, many people may uh, not know because Grand Prairie's grown so much that uh, Grand Prairie's first MRI machine uh, came as a result of private donations. It wasn't something that Grand Prairie would have had um, because the provincial government wasn't going to roll that kind of service out all across the province. Um, but residents in Grand Prairie decided that it was an important service to have for the entire Northwest. Um, and uh, at the time, Doug Marshall, a local car dealer, uh, contributed a million dollars towards that effort uh, to ensure that Grand Prairie had an MRI machine available here in our community. Um, Doug passed away a couple of weeks ago. Um, and his family was on stage to make another million dollar contribution uh, to the hospital foundation. And so just a really amazing legacy uh, of someone who had already given so much to our community. And so I wanted to make a special note of that. Um, and with that, we'll call our meeting adjourned.